right, we'll go ahead and get started then. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining into the webinar today. Welcome to the Prairie Conservation Action Plan's Native Prairie Speaker Series. My name is Caleb alderson Burak, and I'm the manager here at the Saskatchewan Prairie Conservation Action Plan. So every month, PCAP asks someone to present uh, either in the form of a webinar or an in-person talk at a particular venue on anything to do with native prairie conservation or species at risk. This presentation will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel, so keep your eyes open for that. And feel free to pass it along to anyone you know that would be interested or couldn't make it today. At the end of the presentation, I'll show you where they can be found on our website. So there are about 40 people registered for this webinar today, so that's great. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming out. Keep your eyes open to our newsletter and our social media outlets for the topic and date of our next speaker series presentation in August. I will show you the links to our social media sites on our website after the presentation as well. So if you do have any, question, any questions during the presentation, on the left-hand side of the webinar pop-up menu, there is a place to type in questions. So feel free to type in questions there, and I will moderate questions at the end. So I'd like to take, I'd like to take a moment to, thank, to note that in-kind support for this project has been given by Simply Egg Solutions and the Saskatchewan Species at Risk Farm Program. Now a bit about Tracy. Tracy Hansen grew up on the family farm southwest of Mancota, Saskatchewan. She graduated with a degree of science in agriculture with a plant ecology major from the University of Saskatchewan in 98. Tracy has worked with various government agencies such as Agriculture Canada, Sask Watershed Authority and the Ministry of Environment. In 2005, Tracy began her career as an environmental consultant. Throughout those 10 years, Tracy has completed numerous plants, plant species at risk surveys throughout Saskatchewan and Alberta for environmental companies involved in oil and gas and pipeline development. She started with Simply Egg Solutions full-time in April 2016, where she was brought on to help develop the Saskatchewan Species at Risk Farm program. She resides on an acreage east of Swift Current with her husband and two daughters. So with that, I will pass control over to you, Tracy, and you can take it away. Kayla? Yep. Okay, now I'm just uh, going to um, bring up there we go. So can you see my screen, Kayla? Um, not yet. Show your screen. Okay, how about that? There we go. Yeah, you're good to go. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you, Kayla. And I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in today. And I'd also like to thank uh, Caitlin and Kayla with PCAP for asking me to uh, give this presentation today on uh, the Saskatchewan Species at Risk Farm program. Um, what I'll do today is just uh, give a brief... Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> am, I, am I good now? <laughs> Uh, can you still hear me, Kayla? Okay, good. I'm just going to um, get rid of that. And um, so what I'm going to do today is just talk about uh, Simply Egg's new program called the Saskatchewan Species at Risk Farm Program. And uh, we're going to just start uh, with a little bit of an overview of the program. Um, it is a three-year Species at Risk program initiative funded by Environment and Climate Change Canada uh, through a fund called the Species at Risk Partnership on Ag Lands Fund. The program is to encompass the entire province and it is um, what we're envisioning uh, is to have the program to have a similar format to the environmental farm plans for those of you uh, that are listening that are familiar with the environmental farm plans in Saskatchewan uh, in the sense that there will be workbooks available to producers uh, to complete in a uh, workshop type setting. Um, the workbook is going to include species at risk ID information, species at risk farm self-assessment, an action plan, and also a list of BMP categories and specific BMPs related to uh, each of the spe species that we're targeting in this program. Um, and kind of the, the last part, or the last component of the program is uh, stewardship projects where there will be funding available. Uh, so I'll just um, continue on with the goals of the program. What are we trying to achieve uh, by offering this program to producers throughout 
Saskatchewan. Uh, we are hoping to work with egg producers across Saskatchewan to protect and enhance species at risk and their critical habitats. And throughout the program, we're also hoping to bring increased awareness to Saskatchewan species at risk and provide some information on uh, what we can do to ensure that these species survive and thrive in their critical habitats. Uh, the purpose, so this is uh, the reasons for achieving the, the goal, so what's uh, a few of the, the purpose, uh, purposes behind the, the program. Uh, the first one uh, is to protect species at risk and their critical habitats on agricultural lands. Uh, so we're looking to enhance and protect habitat uh, essentially to help increase population numbers of these species that we are concerned with. Another purpose is to maintain prairie biodiversity. Uh, plants, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, and microorganisms all contribute to a healthy functioning prairie ecosystem, which is uh, extremely important in the, uh, providing habitat for these species. Uh, recognize species at risk as a benefit to producers and acknowledge producers that may already have species at risk on their farms as environmental stewards. So objectives, what's the specific action we're going to take to attain these goals? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we are in the process of creating a workbook which is going to uh, serve as, as the foundation and the basis of this program. Uh, once that is complete, we're hoping to hold pilot workshops throughout Saskatchewan. Uh, once the pilot workshops um, are complete, then we're going to be offering producer workshops um, and throughout these workshops, I'll be going into a little bit more detail about what these workshops um, are about. Uh, but within the workshops, um, we're providing participants with an opportunity to complete species at risk farm self-assessment and, and then also to develop a species at risk farm action plan. Um, and kind of one of the, the main goals, I guess, of the program or one of the end components is in relation to our stewardship projects. Uh, so just a little bit more information about our pilot workshops, uh, and this is one of the stages that we're at where we're looking for interested producers to attend the workshops uh, in order to just get some feedback and suggestions in regards to the workbook process and action plan uh, implementation. Uh, so if there are any of you that um, are listening today that might be interested in participating in some of our pilot workshops. Um, uh, you can contact me and, and I'll be giving some contact information at the end of today's presentation. Um, and just a side note, uh, producers who volunteer to participate in the pilot workshops and provide, uh, provide us with some feedback will receive a one-time monetary payment of $250. So there's a little bit of extra incentive there for you as well. Uh, our first pilot workshops are tentatively scheduled for Swiftcurrent and Saskatoon uh, with the dates to be announced. Uh, kind of the time of year we're hoping, um, hopefully later this summer and early fall uh, for those of you that are interested. And those dates and locations of, of our upcoming workshops will be made available uh, on, on Simply Egg's website um, and in other um, uh, uh, media as well. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Um, so once the pilot workshops are complete, then we can move into our um, kind of mainstream producer workshops. And now these producer workshops are, are open to all interested producers, uh, whether you have a known species at risk population on your farm or ranch, or if you are interested in learning about uh, the specific species at risk in Saskatchewan and, and maybe you'd like to learn a little bit um, information on how to identify them, uh, learn a little bit more about their habitats, that kind of thing. Uh, these workshops are open to all interested producers. Um, participants will receive a workbook um, which will include a species at risk ID tools, farm self-assessment, and um, upon request also aerial images of your farm, uh, which is intended to kind of help with um, uh, the, the farm self-assessment part of the workshop and also uh, imp making any management uh, plans. Um, these workshops are intended to give producers an opportunity to complete uh, species at risk self-assessment of their farm, uh, which is based on a number of parameters such as the location of your farm, uh, any landforms that might be present, habitat types present, uh, number and nature of water bodies that might be present, grazing plans, cropping, rotation plans, etc. Um, 
things like that. Um, following the self-assessment um, throughout the workshop, um, producers will then have probably decided which species uh, they would uh, like to manage for. And uh, then based on that, you can develop an action plan. So trained Simply Egg staff will be available to assist with action plan development, uh, which will uh, more than likely be based on a number of BMPs that are included in the workbook spe uh, specific to the species that you're interested um, in managing for. And again, I'll be going into a little bit more detail about the BMPs and, and the workbooks that will be provided uh, throughout these workshops. Uh, so the um, kind of the final component, I guess, of the program um, is in regards to stewardship projects. Uh, so upon completion of the Species at Risk Farm Action Plan, producers are then eligible to apply for funding uh, to help with the cost of implementing the recommended BMPs. Uh, producer gets through the farm self-assessment and the action plan process and uh, has made some decisions that they want to implement, maybe some management changes, um, that kind of a thing. Uh, so then they are eligible to apply for funding through our Species at Risk Stewardship program to help cover the costs of that implementation. And uh, just a side note, the application process is going to be separate from the workshops and more information will be made available at the workshops. Um, and also um, an incentive uh, to note here is successful applicants will receive funding to cover 100% of the cost of materials and labor to implement that action plan. Uh, an important part of the program that we want to make participants aware of is that all information gathered during the workshops and throughout the project application process will be held in the strictest of confidence. We feel that this element of confidentiality is of the utmost importance to producers and we just wanted to make everyone aware of, um, aware of that. And also in the past, uh, Simply Egg, uh, which used to be PCAB, uh, was diligent in keeping information confidential to over 12,000 producers who participated in the EFPs throughout the last number of years. Uh, so that's a brief um, overview of, of the program process. Um, so we have workshops, workbooks, action plans, stewardship um, programs. Uh, now I'll just kind of go into a little bit more detail about uh, the species that we're uh, wanting to target within the program and give a little bit of information about each one of the species. Uh, so in this program we are wanting to target 16 different species. We have our upland birds which includes greater sage grouse, burrowing owl, ferruginous hawk, short-eared owl, sprague's pipit, loggerhead shrike, common night hawk, chestnut collared longspur, McCown's longspur, and then we move into our wetland birds, which include piping plover, long-billed curlew, and yellow rail. We have three mammals that uh, we've decided to include in the program. We have swift fox, Ord's kangaroo rat, little brown bat, and then our one lone amphibian, which is our northern leopard frog. So you might be wondering um, how did we uh, decide upon those species, and uh, there is a, a governing body that um, studies these species and uh, it is their responsibility to um, assign status rankings for these species and that uh, agency is called COSEWIC or the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada. So based on the species that, that they had listed, um, particularly obviously for Saskatchewan um, and the species that um, we were we were concerned with to include in the province um, and based on on these status rankings. So how the status ranking works uh, is um, there is the extinct status which is a wildlife species that no longer exists. Uh, we have our extirpated species which is a species that no longer exists in the wild in Canada but it ex exists elsewhere in the in the wild. So an example of that is the greater prairie chicken. Um, our endangered species, um, that is a wildlife species that is facing imminent extirpation or extinction, which is uh, the burrowing owl. Uh, an example is a burrowing owl. 
The threatened status uh, is a wildlife species that is likely to become endangered species if nothing is done to reverse the factors leading to extirpation or extinction. So these species are of um, uh, great concern to us. And an example of a threatened species is Phrygianus hawk. And then they have the species that they have ranked as special concern. So these species may become threatened or endangered because of a combination of biological characteristics and identified threats. Uh, so I just thought that um, was an interesting uh, slide to include just to give a little bit more background on on who and and how these these statuses are are um, decided upon. Uh, so now we'll just go into uh, just a little bit more detail about the 16 species that we're trying to target. Um, some of them you may be familiar with the greater sage grouse, which uh, lots of work has been done in Saskatchewan in regards to this, uh, this species, and this species is considered endangered in Saskatchewan. Um, and its habitat um, is basically restricted to grassland and sagebrush complexes uh, limited to pockets in southwest and extreme southwest Saskatchewan. Our next species is the burrowing owl, and it is uh, considered to be endangered. And its habitat, uh, the burrowing owl tends to prefer open grasslands in relatively flat areas which are free of trees and dense shrubs. The areas that they like to nest and forage in are ideally areas with short, uh, sparse grasses with uh, taller, denser vegetation. And nests and roosts uh, generally in abandoned animal burrows that are usually dug by gophers or prairie dogs. Our next uh, species is the Phrygianus hawk, which is considered to be threatened. And um, the Phrygianus hawk prefers prairie um, that is open and arid, dominated by grass or sagebrush. They often build their nests in solitary trees on cliffs or raised areas and generally hunt in surrounding open areas. And you'll often find them perched on poles or on the ground. Uh, the next species um, is the short-eared owl, which is of special concern. And um, this species uh, makes use of a variety of open habitats, including tundra, grassland, and marshes. And they're often seen flying in search of rodents, often in daylight as well. Uh, the next species um, of uh, concern is the Sprague's pipit and it is considered a threatened species. And this little guy is very solitary, um, nests in short grass with bare ground and open patches, um, and is generally um, hard to see, but um, you can hear, hear their calls um, in, in these types of areas. Uh, the next species is the loggerhead shrike, which is considered endangered. Um, this little guy uh, prefers open areas such as native or tame pasture, uh, feeding with nearby thorny shrubs or trees such as buffaloberry or hawthorn. Uh, they're also found farmyards, golf courses, um, and other areas with uh, shelter belts. The common nighthawk is considered to be threatened, and uh, the nighthawk is found in open areas um, often perched uh, during the day on fence or rails. Uh, they can, uh, uh, for those of you that are familiar with, with this bird, um, they've seen flying erratically at dawn and dusk as they hunt insects and have been known to, to make swooping, um, I guess, uh, movements to, <laughs> uh, erratically towards uh, people, but I guess they're just um, trying, to, trying to get their food for the day. Uh, the next species is uh, this little guy, the chestnut collared longspur, which is a species of special concern. And this is a summer resident that typically breeds in recently grazed or mowed, uh, mixed or short grass prairie. And these guys tend to prefer uh, short vegetation and moderate to low litter levels. Uh, we also have another long spur on the list, um, is the McCowan's long spur, and this is a threatened bird. And these guys exist on arid grasslands with low, sparse vegetation with patches of sandy, bare soil. So that takes care of the upland birds, and then we move on to our wetland birds. And the first one is the piping plover, which is considered to be endangered. And 
uh, these guys uh, nest on gravel shores of shallow alkaline or saline lakes and also on sandy shores of freshwater lakes. Uh, you can find them on sandy or gravelly beaches. Uh, the next species is long-billed curlew, which is of special concern. And you'll find the uh, long-billed curlew. They prefer open native prairie, relatively free of trees and shrubs. Uh, they tend to nest in the vicinity of wetlands and use a vegetation such as native prairie, tame forage, cropland, um, and occasionally wetlands where insect densities are highest, uh, where, where their food source is plentiful. Our last um, wetland bird is the yellow rail, which is a special concern. And these guys are very secretive and they prefer to um, hang out in damp areas with dense grass and marsh edges. Uh, the next one, uh, now we're moving on to the mammals, and uh, we have our little brown bat, which is considered endangered in Canada. Uh, these guys in the winter, they congregate, congregate for hibernation in caves. Uh, in the summer, they forage over fields and water bodies, and uh, during the day, they will be found roosting in tree hollows. And here we have the swift fox, which is uh, now considered to be threatened in Saskatchewan. Um, this guy is a year-round uh, resident of the prairies that prefers open grassland, uh, generally where they are able to have a long, unimpeded line of sight and opportunities for good mobility. So large tracts of native prairie is where you're going to find this guy. Uh, we also have the Ord's kangaroo rat, which in Saskatchewan is only found in the great sandhills of Saskatchewan. Our lone amphibian is our northern leopard frog, which is of special concern. And these guys have three different types of habitat, just depending on what season uh, it is. Uh, so they have their breeding pond habitat, summer feeding habitat, and um, their overwintering habitat, um, which their overwinter habitat, uh, they have to have a water body that's deep enough for spring fred as so they don't freeze to the bottom in the winter. Uh, so that's just kind of a brief um, look at, at the species that we're trying to target in the program. And I just thought I would provide just a little bit of information on their habitat um, for those that are interested in learning a little bit more about where you might be able to find some of these species. Um, what I'm going to move on to next uh, now is um, just to talk a little bit about the workbook. Um, that will be provided at these workshops. Um, so the workbook is going to include uh, basically an overview of the, the Saskatchewan Species at Risk Farm Program process. Uh, there's an introduction um, going to quite a bit more detail about the process um, of the program. Um, there is a section called the Identification Station section which provides uh, lots of information uh, to identify these species, and I'll be giving um, some examples of that a little bit later on in the presentation. Uh, then we have the Species at Risk Farm Ranch Self-Assessment section. Um, we have uh, the BMP section, which um, uh, under each species is a list of uh, specific BMPs related to that species, and we also break, uh, break it down into uh, BMP categories as well. And um, towards the end of the workbook uh, is the Individual Farm Ranch Species at Risk Action Plan. So that's just what to expect from the workbook. Um, here we have the cover of the workbook, and I'll just um, go through just a few uh, tidbits uh, of what we're um, offering in this workbook. Uh, this is just an illustration, um, a little bit more detail about um, what's included uh, when you participate in the program. Um, we have our ranch farm self-assessment um, and then based on your self-assessment uh, you can decide which species at risk best suits your land and then uh, we'll also go through with you uh, like during the, work, the workshop and, and the process um, there's going to be Simply Ag staff um, conducting these workshops uh, to help you with this process, um, to help you help you guide you through the workbook, 
uh, guide you through the self-assessment, um, help you uh, prioritize which species at risk maybe to focus efforts on if, if that's an issue. Um, and then also, too, our Simply Egg staff uh, will be there to uh, review the BMPs, go through the BMPs with you um, so you can help uh, implement or so you can help develop that action plan, which is the next, um, the next step there. Uh, so I mentioned that within the uh, workbook um, is a, a, a section solely on identification of these species. Uh, we felt that this was an important uh, component to include in the workbook um, just to provide this important information in the workshop, uh, not only just the information about what species you know, we're concerned with, but uh, when you're out and about on your farm or ranch or wherever you might be, um, you might want to um, be able to identify what species uh, you're, you're looking at or what species of concern that you might have. Um, so this is an example of what the identification station is going to look like. Uh, we have, we're providing um, images of each of the, uh, the species. And then also, too, we just, um, in addition to the images, we're including illustrations, which will point out just key identification features. So example, uh, for example, with the short-eared owl here, the short ear tufts um, is definitely um, an identifying characteristic of this species, uh, provide habitat information, um, a, a little bit more detail about the features and identifying characteristics in regards to the, the size of the species. Um, and since most of the species that we are including in this program are birds, uh, we also felt it was important to include some information on bird calls. Um, at the end of the workbook, we're going to be including uh, links to audio clips. Um, of what the bird calls actually sound like. So that, that is quite interesting as well. So that is our identification station. Um, we're also including for each of the species uh, just this um, occurrence uh, map. Uh, so basically um, we're hoping that this will help uh, participants in the workshop um, become familiar with the species that might exist in their area of the province. For example, we have northern leopard frog here, and uh, wherever it's bright pink on the map is where they are known to occur. Uh, so you can kind of quickly look at this map and, uh, and decide, you know, I live within that area where northern leopard frog exists or I don't. Um, so you can uh, quickly make uh, that, that call as to whether or not there's a possibility for northern leopard frog to be on your, your farm or not. And these maps will be provided for each species as well. Um, so moving on to um, kind of the, the beneficial management practice or the BMP part of the workbook. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we are including uh, these BMPs in relation to each of uh, the specific species. And I just thought I'd include uh, just kind of a, a breakdown or, or the BMP categories that uh, we're including uh, in the workbook and also just um, uh, some categories to, to think about. Uh, so we have our grazing management, woody species control, invasive species control, prescribed fire, forage harvesting, cropping management, predator management. We have uh, insecticide, pesticide, and rodent side management, uh, water developments, road and other linear developments, and uh, we also have some management of burrowing owls. And moving on, um, within the, the BMP section, um, we're also uh, providing these diagrams uh, which just kind of show, uh, kind of outline what kinds of habitat each of the species, uh, what habitats they tend to um, prefer and what they tend to avoid. Uh, so we're kind of hoping that this uh, visual will help um, producers, uh, when you're thinking about a species to manage for, well, what uh, what kind of habitats 
where, where would I find these animals? Um, what type of habitats do they like? What do they tend to avoid? Uh, and we just thought that these, uh, these diagrams uh, just really helped in, in painting that picture of, of what these species um, prefer and, and what they tend to avoid. So for example here, uh, we have a diagram of the burrowing owl. And so all in the green arrows and the green text there is what they require. So the burrowing owl, um, part of their habitat requirements include burrows dug by badgers, ground squirrels, prairie dogs. That's where they, uh, that's where they have their nests. Um, they require areas of short and sparse vegetation for nesting. And also included in the green there is they prefer mid-height vegetation for hunting. So as you can see, they have um, all those requirements, whether it's for hunting, uh, nesting, or foraging as well. Um, and generally, they prefer large, flat, open grasslands. Um, they um, say uh, best is 64 hectares or larger with short and medium height vegetation. And what burrowing owls tend to avoid um, is in the red um, over on the left-hand side there. They tend to avoid areas where there's trees and dense shrubs, and they also tend to avoid areas where there's tall, dense vegetation. Um, and if you want to get really specific about it, we do have um, measurements included as well. But just generally, they, t they tend to avoid tall, dense vegetation. Uh, so that well, these types of diagrams are included for each species uh, within the BMP section. And we're just hoping this will help in making management decisions when managing for these species and also taking uh, your operation uh, into account as well. Um, so that's um, the, the workbook part of the program. Uh, now what to expect from the workshops. Um, as I mentioned before, these workshops are open to all egg producers and are free to attend. Participants will be provided with a workbook um, and aerial images of their farm and ranch upon request. And we're just hoping that these workshops um, will provide an opportunity for egg producers uh, to become familiar with these species-specific BMPs and ways that uh, they can uh, perhaps plan and manage for those species at risk um, that will also complement existing management plans and goals uh, on your farm or ranch. So where are we at uh, with the program? Uh, we are uh, generally in the, in the fairly early stages of the program uh, still. Um, we um, the workbook process, uh, the peer review of the workbook has be, been completed, and the first draft and printing of the workbook is to be completed very soon. Uh, following that, uh, we'll need to um, have some staff training with our pilot workshops to follow. And as I mentioned before, um, our first pilot workshops are tentatively scheduled for Swift Current and Saskatoon. And once those dates and locations have been confirmed, um, we'll be making those uh, days and and uh, locations available to the public. Um, and as I mentioned before, yeah, if there's anyone uh, that's listening that's maybe interested in participating in our pilot workshops, um, you can contact me. Uh, my phone number uh, is 955-5477, or you can also email me at tracy at simplyag.ca. Uh, so that's um, the Saskatchewan Species at Risk Farm Program in a nutshell. I hope that you found that to be informative. And again, I just wanted to thank PCAP for asking me to be a part of their Native Prairie Speaker Series. Um, I really appreciate that. And uh, it's a really good opportunity to just um, promote the program and to provide a little bit of information uh, to producers about what the program's about and, and where, we're, where we're at with the program and, and what we envision the future of the program to to be. So with that, um, I will try to pass this back on to Kayla, and I believe we can uh, take questions. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tracy, for, Tracy, for that presentation. That was great. Um, I, I will include uh, Tracy's email in uh, follow-up uh, email for the webinar that you'll get tomorrow as well. Uh, if, you, if you missed her contact info, that would be coming out, and feel free to use that to uh, follow up with any questions that you do have for her or just want to talk about the plan. And 
once I get control back, I will uh, bring you to the website, PCAP website, to show you where uh, the links to our speaker series presentation presentations are listed. Uh, I don't have any questions yet, so feel free to type them in right now, and uh, and I can moderate okay. those, uh, in a couple minutes. Sure, that sounds good. You find my name there. Do I, uh, by your name. Yeah, so just right click on my name and uh, make me presenter. Uh, okay, let's go. Why can't I find your name? Uh, just in the attendees box, I should be. Uh, it's by first name alphabetical. In the, in gotcha. The yeah. Okay, click on make presenter. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. And yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay, so if you go to our website here, pcap-sk.org, uh, under Communications tab at the top here, you go to Native Prairie Speaker Series. Um, all of our past uh, presentations are listed here with the links to the presentation on our YouTube page. So that'll be uploaded by the end of this week, I'm sure. So uh, keep your eye out for that, and free, free, feel free to pass it along to uh, anyone that, that may have missed it. All right, so I have a question here, it looks like. Are there any thoughts of adding a few plant species to the list of target species? Uh, yes, there is. And um, uh, when we were um, uh, deciding on what species to include, we did have that conversation. Um, do we include plant species? Uh, do we just include birds? That kind of a thing. So uh, what we had decided was just to start off the program uh, with these 16 species and with the hopes to uh, definitely add some plant species in the future as well, um, for sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, another question, so when a producer attends a workshop and comes up with a plan and is eligible to apply for funding, is there an idea of the odds uh, that that funding will be approved for the producer? Uh, what um, we have to, uh, Jeff, yeah, go through the application process and the applications are going to be uh, just reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis um, and uh, generally, you know, kind of the, the quick answer to that, you know, is as long as, as the program, you know, is protecting, creating, or enhancing habitat for, you know, one or, or multiple species that we uh, have included in the program, uh, you know, then it's definitely something uh, that, that we will consider for sure. Uh, but at this time, um, you know, the applications are going to have to be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, you know, with um, uh, successful um, applicants, you know, being being decided upon at that time. So, I kind of I hope that answers the the question there. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. And again, if anyone has any other yeah. questions or wants to follow up on anything, feel feel free to email mm -hmm. me afterwards. Yeah, that if that for sure. Yeah, you know, you're wondering more. Okay, one more question okay. here. Uh, where would native prairie restoration or prairie retention fit into uh, your BMP list? As there are quite a few species that are native prairie dependent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I would say that, yeah, for sure, the majority of them are native prairie dependent. And uh, just to, to clarify the question, um, are you asking if native prairie restoration is included in our BMPs, or where would it, it fit in the BMPs? Because I guess that, that in itself could be its own BMP, I guess. Yeah, I, I, think, I think they're wondering about both, it sounds like. Okay, yeah, yeah, well, and, you know, native prairie restoration, um, kind of how I see it, would, would maybe fit under grazing management, or it could, you know, just be added as a BMP, um, all, all its own uh, kind of a thing. So, um, and also, too, I should mention that the, the BMP categories that I have listed there, I, that's a preliminary category, just kind of based on, on the stage that the workbook is at right now. It's not, those categories are not set in stone. Uh, we can add to those, you know, as we move on, uh, progress with the program. Um, 
and again, you know, we receive an application that, you know, maybe there's um, they're still creating, protecting, or enhancing habitat that maybe doesn't fit into one of those BMPs. It's still an application that's going to be um, reviewed and and, and considered, um, and we just you know, might have to fit in into one of those BMP categories. But I do think it's important to note that those BMP categories are not 100% set, set in stone. And, and um, if we need to add to that as we, as we continue with the program, we will. Definitely. Well, we're getting some good questions here. Uh, can you explain what the prescribed fire BMP would look like and which species would that target? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can go into a little bit of detail about that. Um, I'll just kind of grab my workbook here. And for the majority of the species, there, there tends to be the prescribed um, fire BMP in there. Uh, now, whether or not that's a BMP that you want to, um, to consider, again, that's up to you. Um, so I can just read this right here. Burning is prescribed for rangeland management purposes. Um, it just kind of has um, some product or some guidelines as to you know when to burn. Uh, positive impacts, for example, on burrowing owl habitat include reduction of carryover, control of invasive weeds, and control of uh, woody plant invasion. So those are maybe some reasons why you would implement a prescribed uh, burn. Um, Again, it's, it's uh, very specific to the species that you are considering. Right, okay. So sure. again, I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm if you sure have any more specific questions question. about the prescribed fire BMP, BMP feel free to type that in. Uh, so while you're in the workbook, there's another question about uh, just explaining a bit more what's included in the predator management BMP. Uh, the predator manager management BMPs? Uh, let me just again see if I can find that. Uh, your predator management BMPs. Hmm. I might have to get back to them um, on that one if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. If that's yeah, just I wouldn't. Yeah, I just kind of have to go through the workbook just a little bit more to um, explain that one correctly. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. for sure. That person can, person can feel free to, to email Tracy or chat more about that. For sure. yeah. Uh -huh. yes. yeah, sorry about that. I just no, don't have that one specifically in front of me. Uh, another question. Are there funding caps per BMP or producer? That's a good question. And, uh, you know, yes, there will be funding caps. And, again, um, like it's just because we're in the early stages of the program, again, um, applications just will re be reviewed on a on a case by case basis. But um, at at some point, yes, there there will have to be uh, some sort of funding caps uh, per application per producer. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I have one last question here. Uh, there are two hundred and fifty dollars for producers to attend the pilot programs, but as far as the workshops, is there any plans for incentive for producers who would need to travel to attend them, mainly to cover travel and hotel costs? Uh, not at this point, not for the mainstream workshops. Um, I'm, what we're hoping to be able to provide producers is, uh, you know, to hold these workshops at various locations across Saskatchewan. I mean, we're not just going to be holding workshops, you know, in Swift Curtain, Saskatoon for the entire program. Uh, you know, if we know of um, producers that are interested in workshops, I mean, we can set up workshops that are close to you to definitely help, um, you know, eliminate uh, long traveling uh, costs and, and expenses and that kind of a thing. So, um, again, if, uh, you know, if there's producers within a certain area that are interested, uh, we will definitely look up at setting workshops uh, in, in your area. And also, we're hoping to be able to provide enough workshops at enough locations throughout the province that, uh, you know, to kind of eliminate long distances to be traveling and accommodations and that kind of thing. So, so yeah. Well, that's a good point, I guess, just to communicate if there are interested producers that you know where mm -hmm. to start, perhaps where the interests are, right? So communication is key, I guess. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So if that's okay. it, 
Um, again, Tracy's email will be uh, in the follow-up uh, email that you'll get uh, tomorrow uh, at noon. So please feel free uh, if you have any more follow-up questions for her or want to follow up on something, uh, please feel free to contact her. And uh, thank you again for attending this webinar. And thank you very much, Tracy, for taking the time to present about the program to us. And uh, keep your eyes open for the recording and pass it along to anyone else who uh, missed it and, uh, and might be interested. And uh, keep your eyes open uh, to our social media links, which I will show you here quickly. Um, the bottom of our homepage, uh, right here, you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and YouTube to keep up with uh, more speaker series and uh, other events. Oh, looks like there might be one more question here. Oh, just okay. a couple of comments about thank you and how great of a presentation it was. So there you go. Good way to end off. <laughs> well, perfect. That's great. Thank you very much. And thanks for all the great questions. Those are, are excellent. And if for some reason I didn't um, answer your question 100% uh, for sure, feel free to give me a call or, or uh, throw me an email. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much again. And thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, have a good day. Thanks, Kayla. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.